it can be really easy to convince yourself that the risks for nuclear energy are just unacceptable because there's always that possibility for cancer. Any exposure to ionizing radiation, how do you know it didn't increase your cancer probability? And so that can be really terrifying, especially if you don't know, right? If you can't say for sure, yes, it is not increasing my cancer probability that we're doing mining or transportation or energy or waste disposal or any of those kinds of things. And that can sound really scary, terrifying even, you know? Well, you can't say that it's not gonna give you cancer. And so that kind of a narrative can be petrifying in terms of thinking about nuclear energy. But the truth is that we actually do know the probability of radiogenic cancers. Specifically, the, the, the biggest cohort was the atomic bomb survivors. There were a lot of people that survived the atomic bomb. They were outside the blast, and so all they got was the radiation as ter in terms of a harm. Uh, well, besides the economic damage and so forth. But the point is, is that they got a large dose. They were far enough away from the blast that they were able to survive. And they, they, they got large enough doses that many of them got acute radiation syndrome and they survived, but they had large enough doses that their probability of cancer was easily measurable. And what we found is that the probability of cancer linearly increased with dose. Now, there's a big question if the doses get small. Do they continue to linearly go all the way to zero? Or is there a threshold? Are we designed for the values that are comparable, for example, to natural background, the radiation that's ubiquitous in the earth and cosmic rays and so forth, what we're always being exposed to on a daily basis? Are we designed for that? Are we designed for normal, typical variations in the environment for that? We don't know about that. Uh, and if you follow that linear probability down, what ends up happening is that that probability is actually too small to measure. And so these fears that we have generally are in this range about cancer probability that's too small to measure. And that's what's allowing us to bias our decision about whether we're going to support nuclear energy or oppose it. At least that's what I found to be a, a common narrative in the comments from me being a nuclear engineering professor talking about nuclear energy, specifically that I teach health physics or radiological safety and radiation protection. Uh, risk and dealing with risk. And, and those are the kinds of biases that tend to uh, fold into the, the social narratives that we see, at least the ones that I've seen from people that are anti-nuclear. And that would be my personal assessment from looking at them over time. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.